Hello and welcome to the Scatterville channel and today I want to show you the best $500 gaming PC you can build in 2022. Okay, so in today's build guide, I'll be showing you all the parts going into this PC as well as how to put it together step by step, then how to install Windows, drivers, and any other things you need to make this PC successfully run. And then I'll get into some gaming benchmarks just showing how good of a value this $500 gaming PC is. Also note, I am going to be giving away this computer and the details for that can be found at the very end of this video. So with all that said, if you want to see more PC builds on the Scatterable channel, then definitely do consider subscribing because there's going to be a lot more coming up. Okay, first things first, every single PC part I mentioned throughout this video can be found linked in the description below. And with that, let's get started. Find the upgrades your PC needs when it comes to memory and storage through using the Crucial System Scanner. That's the tool that I use to help upgrade this $400 gaming PC build you see here from a regular 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM kit to a Crucial 32 gigabyte DDR4 RAM kit and upgrading from a regular 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD to Crucial's P5 Plus one terabyte M.2 SSD. And the coolest part about Crucial System Scanner is that it's free to install and use on your computer to find the best upgrades for you. And if any of those upgrades pique your interest, then you can get an additional 15% off any of those items through using the discount code on screen. Link in the description for more. Okay, so to build this computer, you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. You're gonna need a Phillips head one screwdriver, an eight gigabyte or bigger flash drive to install your Windows 10 or 11 bootable media device on, and a pair of scissors to open anything. So go ahead and unbox everything, the processor, the processor cooler, the RAM, the M.2 SSD, and your motherboard. Starting with our motherboard, this one includes Wi-Fi, so we're gonna to wanna to keep this because that'll allow us to connect to the internet. Here's our absolute shonker of a motherboard. There you go. And then if we open the box further, it comes with a motherboard manual. You will definitely need this. These are SATA cables, you don't need this. And you won't need these additional screws here. For the processor, we're using the Intel Core i3 10100F or the 10105F. Either of these will work in this build. It just depends on which one is cheaper at the time you're watching this video. Four core, eighth rated processor, still very viable for a budget gaming PC in the year 2022. Trust me, this thing's still got a lot of power. Oh yeah, and with the Intel Core i3, it also comes with a stock CPU cooler, which already has thermal paste. Then for our motherboard, we're using an A Aorus. B560M Pro AX motherboard. The AX stands for Wi-Fi, so this already has Wi-Fi. No need to get an ethernet adapter or a Wi-Fi adapter for this motherboard. For our RAM, we're using a two by eight gigabyte kit of RAM from Silicon Power running at 3200 megahertz with a Castlane CF16. This is all fine. Then for our storage, we're using a single 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD from Neo Forza. And the good thing, is that this one has a built-in DRAM controller. So to install our processor, go ahead and unlatch this lever, bring this back, take off this plastic black piece, go ahead and unbox your processor. So while you're holding the processor, you'll see that there's this tiny triangle on the bottom left of the CPU. And if you look at your CPU socket, there is a triangle imprinted on the bottom left. So you're gonna to wanna to line up the triangle on the bottom left of the processor with the triangle on the bottom left of the CPU socket. So go ahead and latch this up, drop this down. This will just sink into place like this. Put down the latch, line it up, press it down. You'll hear some pins crunching and there you go. Here the text should be legible facing upwards. That means you did it right. Then to install our memory, go ahead and click open these two slots right here, also known as slots B2 and A2. These RAM sticks will only go in one way. Go ahead and put it in. You should hear an audible click and do the second one. Make sure these RAM sticks are clicked in all the way. Otherwise, you may have a failure in booting up this system. 
Okay, let's install our storage next. So go ahead and unscrew this screw with your Phillips head one screwdriver. This should just come right out. Before you go further though, make sure to peel that off. Then take your M.2 SSD and line it up with these two notches right here. It really should just go in one way. There you go. Take your M.2 shield, put it back in this little slot, bring that down, line it up and screw this back in. Okay, after some trial and error, I was able to put on the M.2 SSD, but I had to screw it in directly onto the motherboard and then put on the heatsink shield. For some reason, I wasn't able to put in the screw through this hole, so this is how I have it. And this probably won't fall off because it's connected by the rubber. Okay, so now let's install our CPU cooler. And remember, this already comes with thermal paste, so you don't need to buy your own. So go ahead and line it up with the logo, Intel logo facing upwards. Then for all four of these prongs, you're gonna push one side in like this, push in the other side, you should hear some clicks. And then the last side, there you go. Also, don't forget to install your CPU cooler cable so your motherboard knows how to cool off your CPU if it gets hot and plug it into this fan header here that says CPU cooler on the motherboard, which should be right next to the CPU cooler. So if you did everything right, you should be able to just pick up your motherboard by your CPU cooler and then you're good. Okay, now let's put our motherboard into the PC case, but first turn your case around and unscrew the back panel. In the back of the PC case here, you should see a little plastic baggie. Let's go ahead and unbox this. All right, so in this little baggie here, we're given a lot of zip ties in case you wanna tie down anything. And inside are two very important things, the case manual and all the screws you'll need to install your motherboard, your power supply, and other things into the PC case, especially your case manual. This will tell you where to put what in your PC case. Also note this stream of cables that's coming from the backside of the PC case. These are your front IO connectors, which is basically your power button, your reset button, your microphone and audio jack, your USBs. That is what all of these cables are. And we'll be plugging this into the motherboard once we install it. Okay, to install our motherboard into the PC case, we gotta go ahead and count how many standoffs are pre-installed in the PC case and see if they're all covered on the motherboard. So if you look on the motherboard, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes on the motherboard that we need to cover on the actual PC case itself. And here there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. So there's one additional screw here that we don't need for the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and take this one out. And with these eight, we are set to go ahead and drop in the motherboard. And there you go, it should line up in place with the backside of the IO shield touching the PC case. So these are the screws you're gonna to wanna to use with your motherboard that came from this baggie here from the back of the PC case. Now let's go ahead and one by one screw in the motherboard into the PC case. But don't screw in all the screws all the way just yet. We're gonna go ahead and tighten down each of these screws individually once we get all of them in place first. Okay, and with all of the screws pre-installed, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down each of these one by one so they fully enter the thread. That way we put equal pressure on all sides of the motherboard. All right, all the screws are firmly in place. We are done. Oh, hey, and one more thing. We have a case fan here that we can hook up directly to the motherboard with this fan header. There's one port right here sitting on the left side of the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and take care of that right now. We'll go ahead and tidy up the cables later, but we got that case fan already in. All right, let's go ahead and install the power supply through the back side of the PC case. So for this build, we are using the Corsair CV550, 80 plus bronze, 550 watt power supply. It's gonna be pretty much plenty for this build actually, because we only have an i3 and a budget graphics card in here, but it's what we're gonna be using. You don't have to use this exact budget power supply. You can use one from a different brand, as long as it's about 550 to 600 watts, you're good. So to install the power supply, go ahead and have the fan side facing down, slide it here into the back side of the PC case. And then if we turn this around, we need to line it up with the four holes here on the back side of the PC case. And to screw it in, we're gonna use these screws I found from the case baggie. 
Okay, so go ahead and line up the holes with the power supply. Take these screws, screw them in, and there you go. And for reference, make sure that this is set to the O. And when you're ready to boot up this PC for the first time, we'll set that to the line. But for now, keep it at the O. Okay, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and hook up everything before we put in the graphics card. So that includes our front IO connectors for our power supply, reset button, USBs, and other things like that. And our power for our CPU, motherboard, and graphics card when we eventually put it in. Let's go ahead and plug in our USB 3.0 header into the motherboard. There is a notch right here that will plug into this notch here to tell the correct orientation. There you go. Now let's go ahead and plug in our HD audio connector into our motherboard. This will also only go in one way. There you go. Now let's go ahead and plug in our front panel connectors, that being our power button, our reset button, and our HDD LED. That's gonna go on this part of the motherboard here as seen from the manual. And if you wanna know the exact spots for where to plug in what, resort to referring to your manual because that'll tell you where plugs in where. But for the sake of this tutorial, power is going to go here. Let's see here. I know this is a bad viewpoint for you guys. Now let's go ahead and hook up the motherboard power to the motherboard. There's gonna be a clip right here that we're gonna put onto this latch here on the motherboard. Plug that in, it'll only go on one way. Then right here with our CPU power cable where it says CPU, we're gonna plug this in on the top left of the motherboard. And again, same thing like the motherboard power connector, there's gonna be a clip, there's gonna be a latch, and this will really only go in one way. This here is a PCIe power connector, which let's go ahead and just have on hand because we're gonna use this when we finally power up our graphics card when we get to installing that. So here it is, the Radeon RX 5500 XT 8 gigabyte graphics card. I think it's safe to say this is gonna be the best graphics card we can use in this sort of gaming PC because at about $150 used, it is probably one of the best budget graphics cards out there, if not the best. Versus the competition, this one has eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory versus say the RX 6400 and GTX 1630s, four gigabytes of VRAM, and even more so than the 1650, four gigabyte of VRAM cards. But also for this 5500 XT, I'm willing to bet it wasn't really mined on a whole lot if you do stumble across one of these used, unlike say an RX 580, so I think it's a safe bet to pick up used. Either way, in terms of performance, it's gonna be the card that's gonna get us that 1080p 60 to 144 frames per second gaming that we want in this sort of gaming PC. So trust me, this is probably the best option we can get in a $500 gaming PC, so definitely take my word for it. You're gonna to wanna to go used for a graphics card in this sort of budget PC. Now let's go ahead and install it. So make sure to take out the two PCI cover slots that are gonna be taking place of the graphics card. We're gonna go ahead and install it on the topmost PCI slot. So we're gonna put it right here. And with this all lined up with the PCI slot and the bracket, go ahead and put it into place. This latch here in the back should snap. But before you completely finish up this card, go ahead and put in the PCI power connector. All right, and go ahead and screw in the graphics card using the same screws that you used for the power supply. That is in there, and there you go. Oh, hey, and one more thing. Remember, this motherboard has Wi-Fi, so let's not forget to install that. So go ahead and install your Wi-Fi antennas here on these little gold screws. This should be a nice signature to the rest of the build. And with that, you are done building this $500 gaming PC. And now let's go ahead and install Windows, drivers, and then get to gaming. All right, so you're done building the computer and now let's go ahead and run our first test boot. But first, make sure you have a few things done. Make sure you have a keyboard hooked up to the computer as well as your mouse. Make sure you have power running to the PC. Also, Click this to the line, that means your PC is ready to boot with the power button. And then of course, last thing, don't forget to use a monitor and make sure it's powered on. And with all of that, let's go ahead and plug in our Windows 10 bootable media device. All right, let's go ahead and press the power button and see what happens. Keyboard's on, graphics card is on, but is there any display? Ooh, Aorus, 
See that? And like magic, hold up, there's gonna be some right here. There it is. All right, so let's go ahead and install Windows. And fortunately, this is very easy. Click install now. Here is where you're gonna enter your VIP SED key for whatever Windows 10 home or pro key you decide to get. For the moment, I don't have it on me, but I'll activate it later. So I'll click, I don't have a product key. I'm gonna choose Windows 10 home just cause. I accept license and terms, hit custom install. And right there is our M.2 SSD. There it's about 500 gigs, hit next. And there you go. All right, Windows has installed and let's go ahead and set it up. Hit yes on whatever country you're living in. Skip. So here's where you can connect to the Wi-Fi for the PC. Me, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that because it just simplifies the installation. Continue with limited setup. I'm gonna call this user, make a password, confirm that password doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter all right go ahead and disable all of these these are just additional processes that will be running in the background that we don't want not now and there you have it you're gonna wait and you're gonna boot into the windows 10 desktop all right let's go ahead and install the final thing that being gpu drivers so Type in the brand of your graphics card, which in our case is Radeon. Ooh, the screen is gonna readjust because the graphics card is new. There you go. AMD drivers and support. We're gonna select our 5500 XT. Here we go, hit submit. We are using Windows 10, so we're gonna expand this. Click download, and we're gonna open this up. If you get this message here where it says Windows protected your PC, ignore that. Run anyway. Go ahead and hit yes. Install. All right, there's our graphics card. There's the version of the Radeon driver we're going to install. Hit install. All right, and with that installed, we're gonna go ahead and restart the computer. But before doing that, make sure on your keyboard, you spam the delete key, because we're gonna do one more thing in the BIOS. Okay, we are in the BIOS and there's one more important thing I want you guys to see. So right here with the RAM that we installed, it is running at its default speed of 2066 megahertz, but it's not running at its fastest possible speed. So right here where it says XMP disabled, click on that. There you'll see profile one and there your RAM is gonna be running at the full 3200 megahertz advertised speed. So once that is done, go ahead and click right here where it says save and exit. Hit yes. And with that, you are done building this $500 gaming PC. And now let me show you the performance it has.
All right, so that is the $500 gaming PC build. And don't worry, I'm gonna get to the giveaway section of the video soon, but let me go ahead and provide my final thoughts on this gaming PC. As of filming this video, I believe you can now get a graphics card like the 5600 XT used for the same price as the 5500 XT 8 gigabyte graphics card we used for this build guide because prices for used GPUs have been going down quite significantly. So now you can throw in an even faster graphics card than what I originally had for this build. Also answer a few questions that I know are gonna come up. Can this computer stream? Yes, you can use the AVC encoder, which is a hardware-based encoder for Radeon graphics cards on the 5500 XT and get some pretty decent streaming performance out of a very value-focused graphics card. And I think that's pretty adequate for a $500 gaming PC as well. Can this computer do VR? It could, though in my opinion, I would at least spend about $700 on a gaming PC that can do VR. And I actually will be making my own in an upcoming build guide. So stay tuned for that. And how upgradable or future-proof is this computer? Well, if you wanted, you could slap in up to an i7-10700 or 11700 into this gaming PC as per the motherboard because it is a B560 motherboard at the end of the day so it can support 10th and 11th gen chips. And then for the graphics card, as long as it can fit this amount of space, you are good, but don't expect to throw in an RTX 4090 because that's going to absolutely overtake this micro ATX case. And of course, any major graphics card upgrade you do in this PC is probably going to require a power supply upgrade as well, so keep that in mind. Or you can just get a bigger power supply right off the bat and be set to go. And the last thing I'm going to say is all this extra stuff I added, like the custom CPU cooler and the RGB fans, is merely for effect and aesthetics. It isn't necessary to make this build work, but I will have these linked in the description below as well as all the other parts I use for this build guide if you want to check out all the things I used to make this computer look the way it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, another build guide video for 2022. More are gonna be coming up, so definitely do subscribe. And now let's go ahead and get to the giveaway. So if you'd like to win this $500 gaming PC, all you gotta do is comment on this video and leave a like on it. I'll go ahead and choose a random winner through a comment picker as per this YouTube video. And I'll double check with you to make sure that you like this video. And if you did, then you won it. And I will try to keep this international, though I can't necessarily ship this computer to like territories or islands. That's just a little too much. But if you're on a mainland country, I'll try my best to get it to you. So good luck. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Skettable Channel signing out.